Hello, good to see you back for this lesson. In previous videos, we explored Contiki, a popular IoT embedded OS, its features and advantages. Now we're going to another flavor of IoT embedded OS, TinyOS, which can be seen as an example of a monolithic kernel. First of all, I will give you an introduction to TinyOS, followed by its features and advantages. TinyOS is an open-source embedded operating system. It is designed for network and memory-constrained systems. It mainly focuses on low-power wireless sensor network systems and Internet of Things devices. Consequently, TinyOS is lightweight enough to satisfy the requirements of an embedded device with not-so-powerful microcontroller with small memory and that operates on battery. TinyOS was created at Berkeley University in 1999 and later developed by many companies and universities. TinyOS and its applications are written using Nessie. Nessie is a structure component based extension of the C language. Now we will discuss the five basic concepts of Nessie. The first one is the separation of construction and composition. This is achieved by the fact that all programs in TinyOS are built as components and then they are assembled to form a whole program. Components have internal concurrency in the form of tasks. A component may be called via its interfaces. Second is the specification of component behavior using a set of interfaces. This means, in other words, the provided interface is used for representing the functionality of a particular component. The third one is regarding bidirectional interfaces. This implies that interfaces define functions which can be implemented by both commands and events. This provides the benefit that a single interface can represent a complex interaction between components. Fourth, is a static linking of components with each other and via their interfaces. This enhances runtime efficiency, promotes robust design, and allows for better static analysis of program code. Finally, a whole program compiler. In Nessie, code is generated by whole program compilers instead of blocks. Therefore, it is better for code generation and analysis. After this introduction, I hope you have main ideas of TinyOS. Now, we go into the internals of TinyOS features and advantages. Absolute size, compared to other popular embedded wireless sensor networks, TinyOS requires minimal RAM and ROM for performing a basic task. It needs less than one kilobyte of RAM and four kilobytes of ROM. Now you may wonder how it can happen. Previously, I mentioned the whole program compiler in Nessie. It is used to remove dev code and applies cross-component optimization to remove redundant operations and minimize the overhead of module crossings. In TinyOS, context switch overhead corresponds to both the cost of task scheduling and interrupt handling overheads. The interrupt overheads consists of both switching overhead and function overhead of the handler, which varies with the number of saved registers. In contrast to the other traditional multimedia applications, sensor network applications are different in terms of time criticality of work. Instead of coercing a priority scheme to allow the correct ordering of the task, TinyOS uses a simple scheduler to schedule based on a set of deadlines. TinyOS with Nest C compiler support debugging and helps to detect race conditions. In order to do this, synchronous and asynchronous codes are considered in TinyOS. In order to give you a better understanding of this process, synchronous and asynchronous code will be explained. Synchronous code, or SC, is a code that is only reachable from tasks, while asynchronous code, 
or AC, is a code that is reachable from at least one interrupt handler. The primary goal of TinyOS is to allow developers build responsive and concurrent data structures that can safely share data between AC and SC. So, components often have a mix of SC and AC code. As a result, there are potential causes of races. It is clear that non-preemption almost eliminates races between tasks. However, there are some cases of potential races between AC and SC, or between AC and AC. There are two options to avoid in such cases. The first one is to convert all the conflicting code to tasks, only for SC. The second option is to use atomic sections to update the shared state. Next, I will discuss about active messages, which can be considered as the main communication abstraction model of TinyOS. Active messages are small packets, about 36 bytes, associated with one byte handler ID. Now, you may, go, you may wonder how active messages work. Let us see. A node dispatches a message using an event to one or more handlers that are registered to receive messages. Handler registration is carried out using static wiring and a parameterized interface. Moreover, single hope datagram protocol and unified communication interface are provided by AM. Higher level protocols providing multi hop communication are readily built on the top of the AM interface. Now, we continue to discuss TinyOS flexibility. To give you a comprehensive understanding of this feature, I will explain characteristics which justify the flexibility of TinyOS. First, TinyOS supports fine grained components. This implies that a complex application is composed from a large number of very fine-grained components. For example, the main code of TinyOS consists of 401 components. In addition, other 42 applications in the source tree use about 74 components each. A component is built with a small number of modules, and each module is from 7 to around 2,000 lines of code. Second, TinyOS provides concurrent components. As I mentioned earlier, any component can be the source of concurrency. Events can be automatically generated by any component via bidirectional interfaces. In addition, concurrency bugs can be removed with the help of a static race detection of Nessie. Third, TinyOS supports hardware and software transparency. Basically, the idea behind is to replace software components with more efficient hardware implementations to reduce energy consumption. For example, using a single chip which consists of microcontroller, memory, radio transceiver, and radio acceleration consumes around 100 microamps, while the standard software radio stack consumes 3.6 milliamps. Last but not least is interposition. One aspect of flexibility is the ability to insert components between other components. Whenever a component provides and uses the same interface type, it can be inserted or removed transparently. Another feature of TinyOS is support for low power operation. To give you a comprehensive view of this property, we discuss three concepts. These are CPU power usage power management interfaces, and hardware-software transparency. First, in order to achieve low CPU power consumption, TinyOS has sleep modes to which it transitions when it is idle. TinyOS tries to sleep as long as possible to minimize power consumption. For example, when listening to incoming packets, the power consumption of the CPU is about 4.6 milliamps, and 2.4 milliamps in active and idle states, respectively. Second, it is uh, difficult to save energy in cases of long-term wireless sensor network applications. 
in order to perform the tasks successfully, TinyOS provides power management interfaces to allow subsystems to be put in low power idle state. For example, by powering down hardware or disabling periodic tasks, power consumption can be dramatically reduced. This job can be done via a set of commands provided by TinyOS. Finally, TinyOS supports hardware software transparency, which is already discussed above. There are many interesting features of TinyOS. However, we cannot discuss all of them here. In order to cover all these features and advantages of TinyOS in detail, I suggest that you go through the documentations in the suggested materials. Before ending this section, we are going to take a look at the classic Hello World example for TinyOS. In this example, Hello World will be printed out the terminal of the device. To learn details on how to write a program and run application in TinyOS, you should come back later to our lecturers, which have more detailed videos. Thank you for watching. Thank <laughs> you.